Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to start an educational blog. So basically everything we're going to cover today is what is an educational blog with a few examples, how to pick a niche and why you need to pick a niche in the very beginning, how to niche down, how to get something called web hosting, which I'll explain to you in just a moment, how to get a domain name for free, hint, click that first link in the description. After that, I am going to show you how to install something called WordPress, get a free and premium WordPress theme, important changes that you have to make to your website so that people can see it, and how to start writing. After that, I'm gonna talk about different ways that you can monetize your new blog or website, why you need to share your content on social media in the very beginning, and about how many blog posts you need to write in the very beginning. Now be sure to check out the first three links in the description as I will be referring to those links throughout the duration of this video. All right, so first things first, what is an educational blog? An educational blog is simply a blog where you are going to be answering questions and solving problems in the educational space. Now what I recommend that you do is spend some time and figure out exactly what your goals are for this educational blog. Are you going to be targeting teachers? Are you gonna be tar targeting parents? Are you gonna be targeting students or educators? Who is your target audience? And the reason why this is important is because your target audience is really gonna define the direction of your website or blog. For example, if you look at this one right here, this is teachthought.com. They have tons of different content on within education, but you know this might not be something that you're interested in. Maybe you are trying to teach students, and then within students, are you trying to reach high school students, middle, elementary, pre-K, you want to make sure that you are spending a lot of time really figuring out who your target audience is and what you want them to know. And then even from there, you want to niche down and, and determine if you want to start with social studies or math or science, what, what, again, what do you want them to know? Because that's going to be very important with the direction of your blog. And again, I think you should take some time and really figure that out. In the very beginning, I think that you should niche down and focus on one, maybe two topics because you don't have any domain authority. You don't have any credibility in the marketplace. And so if you can focus on one or two, one or two areas or called niches or sub niches, you can start building domain authority and get the credibility that you're looking for. And I just want to show you, what I want to do now is I want to show you some keywords that this website, teachthought.com, are ranking for to help you better understand the reason why you wanna pick a niche and niche down. As you can see, this website is ranking for all sorts of stuff, and you should pick one or two and really focus on it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the keyword difficulty and change that to five or less. This means it should be relatively easy for a new blog or website to start creating content in this keyword or keyword space and start making money. As you can see, they're talking about everything from autism to bad teachers, scientific lectures, um, children's books that are a dollar. Pick one or two of these topics and go after it and create content. So if we jump back over here, we talked about what is an educational blog. We picked a niche. We talked about why you need a niche down in the very beginning. The next thing that you wanna do is you wanna go out and get web hosting. You need web hosting so that your website can be seen by people from all over the world. What you're going to do is you're going to rent hard drive space called a server from a web hosting provider. If you click that first link in the description, you'll get access to my number one recommended web hosting provider for new bloggers. When you click that first link, you'll get a domain name for free for the first year. The domain name for this website that I've been mentioning is called teachthought.com. This is how humans refer to websites and web pages. You want to get one of those as well. And so what you're going to do is you are going to set up your WordPress website, and I'll explain to that, explain what that is in just a moment, but you are going to click the first link and go ahead and get everything set up. In fact, I'm going to walk you through setup step by step. It takes less than five minutes, but you'll be up and running fast. When you click that link, you'll be taken to this website where you'll go ahead and click get started. What I recommend is to click the first one on the far left, the basic plan, if you're just getting started with a website. As you can see, there are a number of options, but click that, click select, and then move on. Here, you're going to create a domain name. If you have one in mind, you can type it in here like you see that I do. What I recommend is try and find a domain name that's going to be related to your niche. Now, what I do is I type in a domain name that I know is already taken. When it's taken, you're gonna get this error. What you can then do is go back and try different domains. Now, make sure again, you wanna pick one that's related to your niche. Click next, and then you're gonna see a green box that says that it's approved. The next step is simply to go through and enter in your contact information. Make sure that you, when you scroll down here, make sure that you leave all of the settings on, um, but, Again, 
enter in your contact information, the settings right here where it says domain privacy, leave all of this checked. If you don't leave it checked, you're going to get people reaching out to you, uh, spamming you, emailing you, trying to get you to sign up for web hosting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sign up and then jump back to you once I sign on and move to the next step. All right, so I have signed up and I'm going to go ahead and set up my website initially. Just create a simple username and password, make sure it meets the requirements there and then move on. Um, make sure that you write it down too. write it down in a safe spot so that you have it and you remember it because it can be a pain to go ahead and get everything back. You're going to have to enter in like some vital information, but just make sure that you write it down. It's really easy and really simple. Now, one thing that I do want to note is that this part is not sped up at all. This is actual real time and you can see that you'll go from absolutely nothing to a complete website in less than probably 10 minutes. And once you click submit, you're going to move on to the next step where you get to log in. Here is where you're actually going to start creating your WordPress website. Now, the great thing is, is Bluehost really does everything for you and it's really simple. So again, I'm not speeding this up at all. And I want you to see what it really takes to create a website. Bluehost is going to do a little bit of work in the background for you. And we're just going to actually click on skip this step. This one, first one I clicked on start a blog but for the next step just click skip because we know what we're doing and i'm actually going to tell you what to do so that we can get up and running click get started right here on the left hand side and then move on just click skip here and click skip here and then just pick the first one in the far left make sure that you're picking a free theme because they'll charge you they have both free and premium themes which i'll talk about in just a moment so right now it's actually creating your wordpress website in just a few moments, you're going to click on log in to WordPress on the right hand side there. You'll see it in just a second. And then we can actually start looking at some basic configurations. All right. So we click log in and now we actually have a WordPress website. What may need to happen is you may need to click refresh a few times to get it to, to work. But now we have our website, as you can see. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to log in and delete a few plugins because right now it has the coming soon and so if someone tried to get to your website at this moment, it's going to say coming soon to them, even though we can see it. This is what your WordPress website looks like. But for everyone else outside of your network, it's going to say coming soon. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to plugins eventually, and we're going to delete some of the plugins that we don't need. Now, I talk a little bit about plugins later on, but um, plugins add additional features and functionality. We are going to deactivate the Bluehost as well as the um other plugins that are already activated and then we can go through and make the necessary changes which i'll cover in just a moment so we're going to deactivate them and then delete them now you want to make sure that you only have the plugins that you're using on your website the more plugins you have the slower your website's going to respond and, and function and you're going to lose out on ranking so make sure you have a lean setup very few plugins and then move on as you can see right now i'm just simply deleting some stuff that you don't need if you want to, you could keep them, but obviously if, if you're just getting started, you don't need this other stuff. What's more important is the themes that we're going to talk about in just a moment, as well as getting writing. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete, delete those, deactivate them, and then we're actually going to start moving on to settings, which you see right here. So now that you've installed WordPress and you've installed a free WordPress theme, I'm actually going to show you how to install a premium WordPress theme in just a second and why that's important. After that, we've made some changes so that your website can be seen. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about a premium WordPress theme. Right now, you have a free theme on your account. It looks basic, it looks bland, and it's not inviting. If we take a look at our reference website here, teachslot.com, this is a WordPress theme. This is laid out simply and clean so that people can get where they want to go and learn what they need to learn. I recommend that you click the second link in the description and get a premium WordPress theme. If we take a look here, we can just type in education and you're going to find WordPress themes that are geared towards education. Maybe they're set up so that they're easy learning environments. Maybe they have additional features and plugins and options so that it makes it an easy learning environment. But what I'd recommend that you do is spend some time, go through here and find a WordPress theme that you like the look and feel of and that's going to be inviting to your audience. As you can see, the WordPress themes vary in price between $12 and $99. But what you're going to do is you're going to find one that you like. You're going to add it to a cart and you're going to check out and pay for it. When you check out and pay for it, you are going to download a zip file to your computer. When you download that zip file, you're going to unpack that zip file and there's going to be a second zip file. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to take that second zip file and you are going to install it into your WordPress website. And to do that, we're going to go down to appearance. We're going to click on themes. When you click on themes, you're going to click on add new, and then you are going to click on upload theme. And then you're going to drag and drop that second zip file right here, or you can click on choose file and find it manually. Regardless of the method, you are going to click on install now and then activate. And just like that, you've got a brand new WordPress theme. Now that we have that installed, the next step is to start writing. Now I get three questions when it comes to writing. How long should my blog post be? How do I start writing? And how many blog posts should I write before I decide to give up? Now to start writing, we are going to go to posts. We are going to click on add new. And to start writing, we are going to use the keywords that we found over here. We're just going to copy this. This is, a t this is a keyword that we are going to target and that people are actually searching in Google and some of the other search engines because they have a problem. So we're just going to paste this in, teaching analogy. And if let's assume that we know what the customer's intent is, uh, we could say teaching analogy, how to connect students with teachers, we'll say. Okay, and to start writing, I like to follow a simple brainstorming session to help me figure out exactly what the customer wants to know. And to do that, I'll just type in who, what, when, where, why, and how. And then what I'll do is I'll take 10 or 15 minutes and I'll simply answer the questions or ask questions with regard to our keyword. Um, we'll say, what is a teaching analogy? Now, when you are doing your brainstorming, it's important to realize and note that you don't have to spell words correctly in this, in this brainstorming session. It's more important that you get your ideas out on paper or on computer and then go back and clean things up later. When to use a teaching analogy. Now, again, I'm going to take a break here. And it's important to realize that you should write down everything that comes to your mind during this 10-minute brainstorming session, regardless if it's good or bad. What we're going to do once we, the 10 or 15 minutes is over is we're going to remove the ones that are bad. We're going to keep the ones that are good. And so what we're going to do is let's assume that we've gone through the brainstorming session and we have a bunch of, of questions here. We're going to just remove the ones that were bad and we are going to keep the ones that are good and turn these into H2s. As you can see, this is an H2. This right here is an H1. You should only have one H1 per blog post. And then we can come down here and answer the question. We can say a uh, teaching analogy is, all right, so a teaching analogy is, and then you just go through and answer the question. Now, before we continue on, we want to figure out how long our blog post should be. And the answer is, it really all depends on the question or the keyword. Your blog post should only be as long as it needs to be to answer the question or solve the problem. Now, to figure out how long your blog post should be approximately is you can take a look at other blog posts that are on the same topic. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to click on this first one and we are going to look and see about how long this blog post is. Now, if I just eyeball this, this is probably about maybe 700, 800 words. I'm going to right click here and do word counter. OK, 500 words. And so what we can do is we can make our blog post about a thousand words in this example. But because we've gone through and we've done the who, what, when, where, why, how method, we're actually going to be able to meet that thousand word, not requirement, but idea much faster. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go through, you're going to write until you've answered the question completely. It's also helpful that you try and think of other questions that the customer or target audience is asking or maybe asking or, or wondering. So that's going to help you fill out your blog post even longer. Once you're done, you're going to go ahead and click publish, and then your blog post is going to be ready for the world. After that, we want to think about different ways to make money. There are a number of ways to make money with your website. If we go back over here to our example, this website actually has ads right on their website. As you can see up here, they're running paid ads. And if we scroll down, there's probably more ads sprinkled in. I think this might be an ad as well. But you can run paid ads right on your website, and it's really easy to do. When you first get started, you can run paid ads with this advertising company called Google AdSense. You click on Get Started, and they'll actually walk you through the process of setting up ads automatically on your website. Now, the only drawback to Google Ads is they don't pay hardly anything. It's, you get paid pennies on the dollar. 
Once you start seeing significant traffic, 5,000, 10,000, 100,000 page views per month, you can move on to other ad networks like Ezoic, Mediavine, AdThrive, and you can make even more money. But in the very beginning, if you start off with Google Ads, you're going to make hardly anything. But there are other ways that you can make money as well. Another way that make money is simply with affiliate marketing. Now with affiliate marketing, you are going to be recommending or selling other people's products and services. When your customers, your target audience, click on your affiliate links and buy the products, you get paid a commission. The way that affiliate marketing works is you go out and you find companies that are going to be congruent or in line with your target audience. So if you're creating an educational blog, you might wanna go out and find educational courses or education-based courses and become an affiliate. You apply to become an affiliate, you get your affiliate links, which are unique URLs, and then you put them on your website. When people click those links and buy the products, you get paid a commission. Now, if you wanna learn more about affiliate marketing, I do have a complete course, the course is free. You click the third link in the description and you can learn more about affiliate marketing. Another thing that you can do is you can actually sell digital and physical products right on your website. If you wanted to, you could sell premium courses right here on your website, or you could use something like Udemy, but you could sell premium courses right on your website and make even more money. Now, selling digital and physical products is outside the scope of this video, but that is an opportunity as well. If we jump back over here, the next step is to share your content on social media. Now, the reason why I think you should share all of your new blog posts on social media is because you aren't going to have any domain authority in the beginning. It is unlikely that Google is going to push your content out, especially if they don't trust your content. And so what you want to do is you want to help build credibility and authority by posting your blog posts in relevant places. If there are educational subreddits or Facebook groups, you could start your own Facebook group. Maybe you have a class, you could you could send blog posts out to your class and to the teachers. That could be an opportunity as well. But in the very beginning, I recommend that you submit all of your blog posts out to friends, family, anyone that's willing to read it. And then the final question that I get all the time is about how many blog posts should I write? And in my opinion, I think you should write at least 50 blog posts in the beginning. I think 50 is a good number to show that you have expertise in the niche or the area. It'll show Google that you are serious about blogging and you are serious about um, helping people solve their problem. So I think 50 is a good number. You should write every day for 50 days or every other day for 100 days until you meet that until you meet that metric. Now, be sure to check out the three links in the description as they are designed to help you. The first one is to help you get web hosting. The second one is to help you get a premium WordPress theme. And the third one is for a free affiliate marketing course. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload my next video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.